Hello, welcome back to part two of Logic Pro X quick tips on the clip distortion from masteringinlogic.com. No nonsense random tips that I think you might find useful. Maybe. For the keys, I want to thicken the sound with clip distortion in the low mids. For this one, placing the plugin on the insert didn't work. I couldn't blend the sound properly. Turning the mix dial up pushed the original signal too far back in the mix, therefore a bus send worked much better. To help bring out the low mid warmth, I dialed in quite a lot of drive, moved the symmetry slider around until I found a warm harmonic distortion, and then used the tone and clip filters to filter out the low and high frequencies. This gives a much fatter sound without getting in the way of other tracks. Because it's on the send, it can be blended to taste without losing the punch of the original transients. Let's A B the part and then hear it with the whole mix. So for this sound, I'm gonna create some mid-range distortion and movement by automating the filter and symmetry section. This will do two things. The mid-range boost will fill out the mix and the automation will help to keep the part evolving over time. All I'm gonna do is automate the slider with latch and touch to change the distortion characteristics and then tease up the clip filter to brighten the part every now and then. Because automating the symmetry and filter controls causes unwanted volume changes, I'm going to add a compressor to hold the part in place. I've set the compressor so it's constantly compressing the signal and moving with the part. Check it out. Let's now AB the entire mix, which has pretty much only clip distortion to process the parts. There's definitely more depth, punch, and it's much fuller, even though there's only a few sounds. I hope this has given you food for thought in adding some clip distortion to your own mixes and that you create some great sounding music, taking these ideas and making them your own. Happy mixing and mastering, Darren. <laughs>